Uh, welcome students in my class, of course e-learning class. Uh, I am going to discuss questions and answers uh, from the Iliad, Homer's Iliad. And this lecture is primarily meant for semester 4 students, I mean the second year students. Now, regarding Iliad, objective questions depending or, or inclining towards subjective themes is very important which can come in your exam and you need to prepare yourself for these questions. You see, uh, many of you often do a mistake regarding uh, determining the genre of this text. It is not a prose text. It is a poetry, poem and it is of course an epic. All the epics are written in verse, not prose. Right. The original language uh, written by Homer was, was Greek, ancient Greek language. The narrator is of course the poet who, who calls upon the bird, the muse, to start the poem right. and who declares himself to be the medium through which one or many of the muses speak. The, the, the narrative point of view is of course the third person narrative, an omniscient narrator who has access to every character's mind, he frequently gives insight to the thoughts and feelings of minor characters, as you have noticed in, in most of the text. Right? Now setting is very important, it is, this, this entire epic is set in the Bronze Age, right? uh, probably between the 12th or 3rd century BC in the Bronze Age. The Iliad begins nine years after the start of the Trojan War and it focuses on few days, few events on the 10th year of the war. The protagonist, there is not a single protagonist. Of course, Achilles is the main protagonist, but there are also Agamemnon, Hector, Odysseus, uh, Aeneid, sorry, I mean Aeneas, Serpedon, and uh, other notable Greek and uh, Trojan variants. The climax uh, reaches, it comes to a crescendo when Achilles returned to combat uh, against Hector, turning the tide in favor of the Greeks. Right. The themes is of course what I have discussed, the glory of war, right. the military values over family life, the pursuit of chaos or glory, the impermanence of, of the or the indeterminacy of human life and characters uh, governed by the gods, the role of gods or divine intervention, these are the themes. Now, uh, aspect of foreshadowing is very significant in case of Iliad. The poet constantly refers to events that have yet to occur and to fitted outcomes. You see, uh, Patroclus' return to battle foreshadows Achilles' return to battle, right? For example, the Hector's taunting of the dead Patroclus foreshadows the desecration of his own corpse, of his, of his, the, the mutilation of his own body in the hands of Achilles. Uh, also, Hector and, Hector and Achilles themselves make references to their own fate, to, to their own destiny. Right? Technically speaking, uh, Hector's references foreshadow any event in the poem itself. However, Achilles dies after the close of the epic. Now, I have almost discussed the major characters, the major protagonists present in this epic. But we also need to look upon the minor characters. And questions regarding minor characters can also come in exam. And most important of those minor characters is Nestor characters. So, but Nestor actually plays a significant role in the developments of Epic's plot. You see, his role as a storyteller and counselor to the Achaean force, and he often provides information. He, he often motivates the Greek warriors. He convinces the Achaean army, the Greek army, to build fortifications around their ships. Uh, uh, fortifications that will serve as the locus for much of the future confrontation between the two armies. He proposes the spy mission on which Odysseus and Diomedes 
uh, killed Dolon and number of Thracian soldiers. You need, uh, you know, the spy mission undertaken uh, under the darkness of the night. Moreover, it is Nestor who convinces Agamemnon to send an embassy to Achilles, right, to sort of satiate uh, his, his anger, begging him to return to battle. Although this mission uh, fails, but nevertheless, it had very significant consequences uh, for which, which turned the action in favor of the Greeks, right? giving an important context to his decision and to abandon the war effort. Finally, ultimately, you see, Nestor proposes to have Patroclus fight instead of Achilles because uh, I think, or we think, that he had sort of conceived that uh, Patroclus will eventually die in the hands of Hector and it will force, it will compel Achilles to join the war. And this scheme, this strategy, Groups to be the turning point of the entire epic. So, uh, please keep this this point, this aspect, uh, in your mind. Next important point is, of course, the role of women. Women hardly present. Women are, were hardly illustrated in the poem, although they play a very important role. There are many strong female characters uh, by. Uh, their actions and deeds, they dominate a significant part of the epic. You see, strong female characters necessarily indicate the goddess, uh, most prominently Athena and Hera, who rank among the most powerful forces in the book. Even the other male gods cannot stand up to them, such was their might. There was also Ares, supposedly the god of war, Ares must see to Athen Athena's superior might because uh, on two occasions, see, Athena and Hera are more than just assertive and forceful. They are very cunning. They are deceptive too because Athena had deceived Hector, uh, which, which compelled Hector to fight against Achilles and embrace his death. Athena is also sharp-tongued and quick-witted. And by using her womanly assets and little trickery, Hera loves Jews to sleep. Hera sort of seduces Jews, right? Jews who was the king of gods and men. So Hera uh, reflects, Hera describes, Hera demonstrates qualities similar to women, similar to mortal women, but having the capacity to rule, to control, or uh, or what I must say, he, she has the capacity to manipulate the king of the gods. In the mortal sphere, however, you see, the Iliad has little to offer in the way of strong female figures. But very few women in the entire story, uh, they, they are quite, quite superior, or quite matching to the male characters. I must mention the characters, the, the female figures of Helen and Andromache, Helen, whom Paris have abducted and Andromache, uh, the wife of Hector. Homer uses Helen to reveal the cowardly underside of Paris's character and to, and to illustrate and to concentrate the Achaean commanders uh, when she describes them to Priam on the Trojan ramparts. Andromache, on the other hand, she helps to make Hector a, a sympathetic character and provide the stimulus for his speech in book 6 about the fate of Troy. So being a very intelligent woman, uh, Andrew Mackey had already understood the fate of the war, what is going to be. The two may seem to be important characters because of the high status they enjoy comparing to their relatives and other women. But compared to the Iliad's male warriors, they are little more than props, right? They are they're very few child. So, uh, next comes the role of fate and having a profound emotional and psychological effect of the Iliad. You see, Homer's original audience would already have been intimately familiar with the story of the Iliad, right? So, making his characters cognizant about their fates and merely puts them on par with the epic surface 
the audience. Uh, he makes, or I mean, Homer makes his characters knowledgeable about their own futures. He loses the effect of dramatic irony. Right. So they do not fall to ruin their advance, but act out of ignorance. But instead become tragic figures who go knowingly to their tomb because they have no real choice. In case of Hector and Achilles, their willing submission to fate, uh, they recognize but cannot evade from their fate. Uh, this aspect renders them not only as tragic characters, but also very emphatically heroic characters. Right? The audience watches these characters, these, these epic protagonists, stumble towards the end that it, that it is alone known in advance. So the audience know that what is going to be at the end, the author, the narrator, Homer, he also knows, but the mode of representation is very significant. In my next lecture, I shall be discussing few other important points regarding Christianity.